joy, 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 and welcome to another episode of Angel Feathers, being hugged by those angel feathers. And today I'm so happy to introduce you all to Jenny Mannion. She's an international best-selling author and she's an intuitive healer and she's my neighbor. That's right. And I've known Jenny for as long as I've lived up here, basically, which is about 11 years, I think. And Jenny, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thanks so much, Swami. It's so nice to be on here with you speaking. And yes, very grateful we are neighbors as well. <laughs> so Jenny, <laughs> let's just uh, float right into this. Tell us of a time when you've listened to your angels or intuition or what, whatever you prefer to call it. And in following the advice, miracles happen for you. Yes, I was able to listen to my intuition, be guided to heal seven years of chronic illness and disease. Mm, wow. Okay. So how did that uh, intuition come to you? Did you hear it? Did, you, did something come to you on, in, in a book form or how, how did you get your message? Yeah. Uh, well, it was the movie The Secret was a catalyst to it. Okay. And then it just opened me up to knowing that I had done all the traditional methods wow. and there was something more that was, I was forgetting. And that was my, my connection to the universe and to listening to my body and to my mind, especially, and really focusing the energy on gratitude and joy and the things that I wanted in my life. Beautiful. So for, for folks at home watching the show, who may not have ever really listened to their intuition. Can you give us a, a little play by play what that meant in your, like you watched the secret, you went home and then did you just have the thought I should eat better or I should try something? How, how did, how did the, even the notion of doing something healthier for you come to you? It was the strong connection of this. It was a very strong feeling like all the other things I'd done to help fit felt like, uh, this is what everyone does, you know, kind of thing. But this felt like a deep message of, mm. wow, I haven't tried just really listening to myself and listening to the way I'm talking to myself and listening to the messages I'm sending to my body. Mm. And I am going to, you know, really devote a couple hours a day to being inspired instead of concentrating on how sad I am or, you know, the lack of what I have and really concentrate on what I'm grateful for and what I do have in my life. So it was really a strong feeling like, Hey, this is something you haven't tried yet in the last seven years. Wow. And it really gave me this a hope, you know, like a deeper hope than I had felt. Mm. And you actually spent a few hours a day. You're saying watching, reprogramming yourself, if you will, putting on a, and yeah, <laughs> reading, reading Deepak Chopra, Wayne Dyer, Eckhart Tolle, you know, watching videos and most important the morning and at night, really listening to how I was speaking to myself and changing that inner dialogue. Can you give us an example of what you heard and what you changed it to? Well, I used to wake up, you know, ow, my legs, ow, this, ow, that, you know, I mean, and the limiting thoughts of what I would be able to accomplish. And instead I change it to gee, I'm glad I have a comfy bed, you know, mm -hmm. you know, maybe I can't run after my kids, but you know what, I can read to them and I can cuddle in bed and read to them. And I'm really grateful that I have this time to do that and focusing my energy on the parts of my body that didn't hurt, you know, and really giving gratitude to those parts of my body that didn't hurt because that meant that they were healthy and there were healthy cells in my body. And if there were healthy cells there, there could be healthy cells all over my body. So really focusing my attention on what I wanted and what I had already, you know, what I already experienced, but I wasn't focusing on. So now you said you, you had some children, which I, of course I know you had children at the time, but now again, for, for moms who are watching who may face any number, it could be a health issues. It could be mm -hmm. emotional issues. It could be career issues or, or anything that's, uh, a challenge how did talk a little more about the dynamic of choosing a new path for yourself and it is and I, I'm glad you brought up that mom thing because you know becoming a parent you have that role put on you and it is really I find one of the 
hardest, most challenging roles, to not receive all kinds of advice from, to not face your inner critic on, to not, you know, just constantly question yourself about. And a lot of times moms will lose themselves a little bit. And I know that I kind of didn't know who Jenny was anymore. I was mom, I was wife, I was daughter, I was, you know, but I wasn't, I didn't even know who I was anymore. So really being quiet so you can tap into that, you know, angel's infinite intelligence and remember and inform yourself of who you are truly at soul level. Now, how did, how did you, how did you, did when, okay, now you, you've been mom, you've been daughter, you've been wife, and suddenly go, okay, guys, three hours for me every day. <laughs> How did that come over? What happened? Well, you know, there's always time. We can tell ourselves there's no time, and then there's no time. We can wake up earlier. We can stay up later. We can use, I use the time, I still use the time in the shower as that, you know, beautiful time. We're lucky we have running water, you know. Imagining that water taking away all the negativity, being in the present moment. What do we intend for that day? You know, are we running through our shopping list or are we running through, you know, how grateful we are for everything we have and for the magnificent day that's going to unfold in front of us. And how soon after you made this conscious choice, and I know it was probably an evolution of changing and choosing, but how soon after did you start to know, I think you're going to say almost immediately. <laughs> Three weeks, I was healed of all my pain, of seven years of pain. Wow. Three weeks. Three weeks. And what did you do to celebrate? <laughs> <laughs> I was definitely in disbelief. And for me, I just wanted to shout it from the rooftops and help others do the same. Mm. Because when you're in that position, you do connect with other support groups and, and things where you find a lot of people in similar situations. And I really just wanted to go back into every group and be like, you can do this, you know, you can feel better. This is amazing, you know, um, and really just express that. And that led to me actually starting a blog and finding out all I could. I had learned some, but I was like, there's so much more, you know, there's still so much more, but, you know, just wanted to kind of eat it up and, and gain as many tools as I could so that I could help as many people possible because all tools don't resonate with you know right. one person and I wanted to be able to offer a huge spiritual toolbox so that people can pick and choose what resonates with them to help them get to that their inner self and that connection so that they can be the the most empowered version of themselves yeah that's beautiful and which you which of your books I know you've written a few now which is the international bestseller well, the Ho'oponopono book was international bestseller, and I actually had my um, book, A Short Path to Change, published in Romanian, so um, that was really interesting. <laughs> I didn't know when the book arrived what it was until I saw my name on it, <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, but I do, love, I do love writing and connecting with people all over the world, and that is something I do in my, in my practice as well. Mm. And your new book is A Short Path to, for, uh, to Change? A Short Path to Change, 30 Ways to Transform Your Life. And is and that- very short chapters with exercises, very short exercises after, I believe in keeping things short and sweet. So we need as little resistance as possible. All right, if you can heal in three weeks, uh, why well, write a book that takes longer to read than three weeks? That's <laughs> <Yeah, it's> true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is great, and I really appreciate your story for moms and even for dads, anybody who's looking yeah. at children. And how do people find you, Jenny, if they want to know more about you? Obviously, the book they'll find on Amazon, I'm guessing. Yep, and they can go to my website, jennymannion.com, J-E-N-N-Y-M-A-N-N-I-O-N.com. I offer a lot of free gifts there just for showing up, and yeah, I would love to connect with people. Super, very good. Well, thank you so much, Jenny. Continue on your magical journey. May your next goal happen in three weeks as well. <laughs> oh, that'd be nice. <laughs> hey, you just inspired my next intention. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, thanks for watching. Tune in for the next episode of Angel Feathers. Thank you. Thank you so much. Joy, joy, joy. Joy, joy, joy. <laughs>